<clears throat> good morning, fellas. How are we doing? Good morning, good morning, ladies, gentlemen, people of royalty. How are we doing today? Welcome back to Pokemon Official Shiny Wars. It's currently day 10. I'm going to be reaching 69,000 encounters dry today. This is stream recap 139, I believe. And we're in Shiny Wars, guys. There's been dreams made, dreams crushed. Particularly, my, my dreams have been crushed so far. But you know what? It's a long two months, okay? So anything could happen. But some people's dreams have finally become reality and are no longer memes. People like Park. Park was 370,000 encounters dry. This man has been doing over about a batch to a batch and a half of eggs every single day, which is about what high-end egg gamers do, but not every day for two years. This man did this every day for two years, and finally, after 335,000 eggs and 370,000 total encounters, got a shiny Charmander yesterday. Park is also the host of official shiny wars within Pokemon. He's the guy who came up with and presented the ideas to the developers to even get them approved, so I think we as a community, like, owe him a massive congratulations it's a crazy thing to see i'm gonna go ahead and swap out my eggs i still have a few eggs here to hatch today let's see what we're cooking with 30 60 90 around 90 or so eggs nothing maybe maybe like maybe 100 or so we have more back here oh we have more back here okay okay 100 maybe 200 one, one to 200 or so eggs. We'll make some more eggs today. Buy whatever ditto boxes we can, most likely. The Pokeyen stack, as you've noticed, is just declining, dude. I started this event with like 30 something, 38 million Pokeyen, something like that. Uh, and it's just been declining, even while selling stuff, you know, here and there. And that's just how it goes. That's how I, that's how I knew it was going to be coming into this event. This is the type of event I dump all my Pokeyen into and just go super aggressive about everything. So there we are. Backed up to 20.8 mil. It's some amount of Pokeyen, but I'm going to go ahead and get over to my Zangoose spot. I've been hunting Zangoose in the daytime. Sometimes I'll do the times 5 horde over at Strafty um, Throw Sock. And then sometimes I'll also do it. Whenever it's nighttime, I'll also head over to Cacnea. Other than that, I've been doing a ton of eggs, which eggs are pretty mechanical and pretty difficult in Pokemon Mill. Other than that, nothing else going on. I'm just here to shiny hunt, guys. Hopefully, you're having a good day. Like the video if you enjoy the stream recap, and I will see you guys with any interesting news or stuff to talk about in the Pokemon community. Pat, I got a shiny Rotom yesterday in an egg. Sixth shiny of the event for me. I'm sorry. What now? You, you just got an egg shiny, a tier zero rare, and on top of it, that's your sixth of the event? Boys, how cooked am I? How 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 cooked are we? What what is what is your total point total? Yes, apparently you need to teach me how to shiny on. I must be I must be doing something mechanically incorrect. Dude, that's amazing. Congratulations. That is what a flex. That's like MVP levels of shunts if you can keep that. That's so inc incredible, dude. Congratulations. Is breeding a two times 31 yourself always cheaper than buying one? It's a great question. I wouldn't say always. But I would say often, same with like the, the more IVs you get up there, the more time and work and like coordination that takes. So the more IVs up until a point, I think like two to three to four times 31s can have like the most profit or like obviously save the most Pokeyen if you want to breed those. Once you reach five times, that's when your Pokeyen kind of falls off, like your profit. I don't usually do five times 31 breeds personally because um, usually at five times 31, that's all those IVs you need on a Pokemon. So if you just don't have the correct nature, let me show you an example. So if I were to have like a 31, let's see, let's do this. 31, let's hide female only species. 31 times five, right? In all physical stats. Um, be, but because, yeah, see these shroomishes? Like because these shroomishes aren't, they aren't correct nature. You have to just buy another five times thirty-one with nature, or randomly roll. Like they're not, they're not worth much because they're actually like really, really. You have to spend so much money to fix these breeds that it generally becomes not worth it. However, so like a five times thirty-one Shroomish is three hundred thirty k. Let's check like uh, let's check Shroomish again to stick to it. Versus this is like two hundred k. Like this is this is like much cheaper to make and worth much more. Um, than a four five times thirty-one. Once you once you reach that point of five times, you'd have to you know combine two of these to make a five times. So that's like four hundred k. So you start losing money once you reach like five times thirty-one, unless you roll nature. If you roll nature, I mean, then you're in the big money. We can actually check the same thing for that. So let's just stick to our shroomish trend. If I were to do thirty-one, 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 and then I would do like adamant or jolly nature. Let's see. 
Yeah, I mean, now, so then you, nature is everything. At five times 31, nature is absolutely everything. You go from 300K to 600. You literally double. You literally double your profits. Um, what about Jolly? Right? Yeah, 500K. Like, it's nature is everything once you reach that five times. And if you don't have nature on that five times, it kind of ruins everything, unfortunately. So I recommend if you're going to breed for profit or breed for saving yen, three to four times 31, is, or even two to four times what you want to stick to. Oh, I have strong opinions on this food take, dude. What is your opinion on nerds, gummy clusters, and where do they rank on your candy hierarchy? They're pretty low tier, man. They're not bad. So nerds, gummy clusters, I did have them. They're just weird. They're like one of the strangest candies I've ever tasted. Nerds in general, I don't love. Like that puffy little dusty of sugar. Like, I like a lot of just sugar stuff. Like, uh, I mean, fun dip is great. Like that's just sugar. Most candy is just sugar, but I don't like the crunchiness of like nerds or like Smarties are a little better, but not great. Um, nerds gummy clusters are probably like a three out of 10 to me. They're weird. They're worth trying. I don't even know if they're worth buying. They're, they're like worth trying if a friend has a bag of them, you know? Like, I, we had a friend who bought a bag, and they were like, I don't like these, and then just gave them to me and Casey. So we just ate, you know? Like, that's the level of... I think they're like a 3 out of 10. They're like weird. Nerd's Rope is definitely way better and more fun all the way, for sure. Okay, JW Tree said shiny male on pheasant is criminally underrated, and I was so ready to shit on on pheasant, because I, I don't know, I just, I just hate this bird. It's... It's annoying to me. I hate this Pokemon, but you were actually spitting ridiculous facts the entire time. This purple mask with the also like teal. I love teal aqua colors. The like, what, what would this even be called? It's like not teal aqua. This is like something else. What's this called? Where's my color experts? Where's like my uh, my swatches from the paint from like Home Depot, Diga Chads in chat. Um, dude, this is actually good. Yeah, it changes. It changes based on. I think the shiny female on pheasant is unfortunately dog shit is the let's go check that one as well so we can like, compare them but honestly yeah i've never been happier to be proven wrong um male shiny on pheasant actually kind of goes hard when you look at it and think about it actually kind of a dope shiny unfortunately she is lacking yeah, I'm going to switch locations so I can crank up my encounters a bit. And I'll give me a chance to show you guys one of the more unique spots that I do hunt at occasionally during Shiny Wars. Now, for this spot, hilariously, I actually do have to go ahead and um, get a different Pokemon setup. And I also, I can only hatch four eggs at this setup. That's the most annoying part, which sucks. But if I want to make sure I catch the Shiny, it's what I have to do. Um, there's a very good chance. Let me actually bring my... Hey, should I bring this? I'll bring this. Um, so the problem is if I if I just bring Smeargle here, there is a extremely good chance, like I'm pretty sure like 80 or 90% chance that if I encounter the shiny, my Smeargle would just die and I would lose the shiny. I need to bring Brelum here because I'll show you guys the spot. Basically, to the west of Black City over here, you can go ahead and encounter times five hordes of Throw, Sock, um, and I think Marowak is the one. You don't really want Marowak. You want Thrower Sock. Those are the best two spawns here for points for Shiny Wars. Times four, five hordes. You don't need to go... You need to heal, but in a unique way. Let me show you really quick. So it's faster if you don't head back to the PC. It's faster if you actually just bike up here over to this location. This is one of the few locations in game where you don't actually, uh, where you can like PP heal somewhere. There's literally just a fucking hidden PC over here. And the reason why that's faster, number one, it's like, I think it might be, it might be either as fast or faster to heal via that versus teleport back to the PC, as well as you can switch your eggs. So if you're egg ticking, you can use that to switch your eggs. That's what I recommend. Um, other than that, yeah, I'm going to be sitting here times five four and get my encounters up. Pidgey farming is now dead, frowny face. I am the first person, okay, to be like, no, like, I, I'll fight and defend, like, certain money, money making methods. Like, no, 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 like, it's not dead, guys. It's just, like, underrated or, like, whatever. And, like, the reality is Pidgey farming is dead right now. Now, it, might, it probably will return in the future once the, just, the reality is it's not that Pidgey farming is dead. It's that one times 31, one times 31 farming in general is kind of just dead right now. Unless you're like, specific Pokemon or specific species. Like, like a one times 31 Rotom is still worth, like, 20k. It's, like, really, really good money, honestly, right? Um, let's go check. Like, any, any one times 31 on a Rotom is worth, like, really solid money. Like, 31 HP. Oh, yeah, 20k. 31 defense. Obviously, not, not attack. It doesn't need that stat. But, like, any needed stat on a Rotom is immediately 20k. It's super sick. Um... But other than that, like, yeah, I mean, 
we've talked about for a long time now the one times 31 and two times 31 market is really hurting for a couple of reasons it's hurting due to the excess amount of alphas being brought into the game at a pretty record pace um, as well as net balls being so powerful that dittos are easier to catch now than ever and all pokemon are being caught more and easier than ever and have higher catch rates than ever because net ball is so good in my this is all my personal opinion um but i feel like the market's being hurt for a lot of those for a couple of those reasons at least in that way uh, i always say just because the one times 31 and two times 31 market is hurting that doesn't mean the market's bad or like the game's in a you know necessarily bad state um it makes breeding for profit good so i recommend breeding for profit is like kind of insane right now whenever i want to make money i just go breed for profit for like 15 minutes make a couple hundred k and then wait for it to sell and then i'm cooking why aren't the rock puzzles solved madge i purposefully leave these unsolved and there's a pokeball over here that i purposefully haven't picked up just to drive up engagement so that people like you in chat get mad about it that's actually the evil petrowski secret why are fossils so expensive right now wouldn't it be better to egg hunt them i love talking about the difference between, between fossils this is the nerdiest sentence the difference between fossil and egg hunting is so interesting to me so fossils are so expensive right now because of shiny wars um the there's positives and negatives to fossils versus egging so let's say you want to egg you know i'm gonna like let's say you want to like try, let's do cranidos right let's say you want to like shiny hunt cranidos okay um, the main cost of egging Cranidos is you're paying 3k or, you know, 4k Pokeyen per ditto, right? So it's 4k is the cost per ditto, but, and then you have to spend the time and I'll explain this to like hatch all the eggs and make the eggs and hatch the eggs. It takes around seven hours to make and hatch 400 eggs. Okay. Keep that number in mind. Seven hours for 400 eggs slash encounters into the hatching. You can't really speed up. It takes a long time. Um, and then fossils so you can pop 400 fossils within an hour and then just release all the cranidoses and go next like fossils are so much like decently faster it's like it's so much faster it's crazy not having to worry about hatching when it comes to fossil bonds is so ridiculously good however the negatives of fossils they sound so good the negatives of fossils is that number one they're way more expensive so you're paying like 10k per encounter or probably 12k if you buy a bunch um and also just stocking up on a ton of fossils is really hard like as you can see there's like what 50 or 60 fossils on that page you know let's say 200 350 <clears throat> let's say fossils in total <clears throat> 500 fossils total let's say 700 i guess yeah maybe seven 800 maybe like the entire market of skull fossils is generally only going to be a few hours like let's say this let's say even in best case scenario like usually the whole market of skull fossils is like three hours of farming it's not actually that much that whole market is probably like five to six hours maybe five to eight that's on the high end that's like more than normal and like but like imagine you know spending your life savings hunting for you know eight hours and then you can't hunt again until like people spend hundreds of hours farming more fossils like fossils only come into the game at a certain pace is kind of the meme so i already been farming fossils for profit right now it's honestly probably really really good there's a lot of stuff on the gtl that i look at and i'm like oh that's like a cool you know i don't mind paying extra pokey end to like buy a tm really quick like so sometimes i will do that like there are people who like buy a bunch of like sweet scent tms for example for 10k sell them on the gtl for a little bit more and then make like a little bit of profit post listing fee but like i don't understand the bracers this i don't get because anytime you would be needing these you'd be near the breeding center and every breeding center has a shop for these where you just buy these for 10k i don't know if there's if someone could give me a reason why you'd want to buy this um i don't think there's any logical reason to ever buy these off the gtl like any of the power bracers power bands any of the for the breeding braces right i don't think there's ever a logical reason to do that unless you just are uninformed and don't know about the shop because there's, there's a shop for those at every single um at every single breeding daycare um i don't know why i don't know why you'd ever buy them off the gtl there's just no, there's just, you're just paying 1k more pokey in and you should always be at the location for them if you're using them if that makes sense uh, did you turn the hatching animation on, Pat? Yes, I have hatching animations set to um, shinies only. Is that under? Where's that at? What settings that under? Um, that was one of the uh, gameplay, probably right. Yeah, hatching. Yeah, this is one of the coolest settings to have as a shiny hunter. Also, this is the fastest. I love talking about this. This was the fastest I've ever seen the Pokemo devs add an update after it was suggested by the community in my entire life. They updated the game and added hatching animations. The community made a forum post suggesting to add, you know, one for only shinies, and they added it within two days. 
I've never, I have never seen the devs work faster in my entire life. I don't know why they were like, they just, oh, that, oh what a genius. I don't, I don't know. They, I've literally never seen them update something so fast in my entire life. It was a two day turnaround from community suggestion on the forums to update it and put into the game. Yeah, speaking of, it's so crazy that we, we just, we got a 10th anniversary event. They said they were going to do an 11th. And then they never did 11th. They never did a 12th. So like it's it's already put. I, I don't. It's it's almost August. I don't see how they could weave in an anniversary event at this point. <clears throat> I feel like it's, it's. I feel like the 12th is also just not happening, boys. Which is kind of crazy. Um, the anniversary was my favorite ever event in Pokemon. And I mean, it's good for me because I made up my biggest investment that I probably have in my inventory is on anniversary chest. So it's literally just a good thing for me if they don't ever implement a new one. But at the same, I mean, but it's it's good for me, but it's not good for the game. I'd rather I'd rather them please devs make an anniversary event. We fucking love them. They're so cool. Um, well, let's go ahead and check. What's my investment? I bought most of these when they were like eighteen to twenty two k. I think some might have been bought around thirty k. But let's go ahead and check fourteen oh five times let's do i'm not gonna sell my let's do 50 oh, let's, we're overshooting at 50k a pop but is it really that much i honestly didn't even know that that's that much so my investment right there that one investment in my inventory is worth around 70 mil right now now i have to wait a little bit i'd wait a long time for them to all sell i have to, I have to disperse them over a few months or so and i have no time to sell anytime soon but 70 mil is pretty crazy wait what channel is he at luke okay luca just got a shiny Dude, Luke. Oh, Luca was the hype man. That's what I'm thinking of. Luca just got a shiny sock, dude. What channel is he on? Do we know? Dude, Luca. Okay, what are the? Okay, we're actually the shiny wet streak is coming, boys. Um, holy shit. Luca just broke a 180,000 encounter streak. He was 180k dry out here hyping up the boys in Discord when they got their shinies. Luka is the definition of the friend you want as a shiny hunter. Dude, what the... Sock is also, like, one of the best shinies here. I The purple, it probably is the best one here. Um, That's amazing. He was 180k dry, and now just finally broke it for a shiny Sock. Dude, I hope he gets rares after. The wet streak is coming, boys. I'm gonna break my dry streak soon. We're all everyone in Team Mister is gonna go, like, 100k dry. We're all gonna be, like, behind for the first half of the war. And then we're going to pull a JW tree moment and get Shalfas right before the, the war ends and get those big W's. Okay, we're talking cereal food takes. And I, I like Raisin Bran. I think Raisin Bran is actually... Maybe it's the boomer in me and I'm just old. There's a shocking amount of sugar in Raisin Bran, I feel like, though. Um, I like Raisin Bran. I think Raisin Bran's good. It's like a little treasure hunt going for those little raisins full of sugar. But the real boomer food take... I think I got this from, like, a, a boomer guy I knew grew, growing up. Um... I actually like grape nuts. Have you guys ever had grape nuts? Now, grape nuts by themselves are pretty foul, but just, a, just sprinkle some sugar, like a like grape nuts and sugar on your on your cereal is bomb. Um, I actually like the the thickness and the crunch of grape nuts at the Rock Eater. Grape nuts are maybe the most comparable thing to eating a bowl of pebbles that exist on Earth. That is probably true. Um, stop yapping and get the shiny. Hey man, yes sir. Okay, apparently the IVs on Luca's shiny is insane. This is the shiny sock that he got to break the 180k dry streak. Dude, it's missing attack, but what? 26 plus? 2 times 31. 1 times 30. 26 plus. This is a disgusting breeder for... um. I mean, if he just breeds... You just, just go mixed sock, Keck W. That'd be terrible. I'm pretty sure it's 30 special attack. Um, but dude, I mean, it's still Giga Chat IVs. That's amazing, dude. That's that is, whew, that's some of the craziest IVs you'll see on a shiny. That's pretty nuts. Okay, well, I aggressively missed missed the uh, 69k, but <laughs> oopsies. There we go, boys. Do you think when Poker Force drops, there's any chance you'll stream it regularly, or will it be uh, still be mainly Pokemon content? It really just depends on how good Pokemon is. I know that I'll do a couple Poker Force, at least a bit of Poker Force content. The question really becomes, what are the odds that Poker Force is better than Pokemon? On release, I would say that chance is like 1% or less. Pro probably less. Now, after two to three years of development and release, that's where that number starts to go up to maybe like 10 to 50%, which is a big range, but we'll have to we'll have to see how... I, we're, there's just so many uncertainties with something like that. Um, 
You never want to jump the gun and be like, I've seen so many players do this. You don't want to be that player who's like, all right, I'm going to quit Pokemo preemptively. It's kind of like Overwatch right now. There's a lot of Overwatch people like preemptively quitting Overwatch um, just in the hopes that is it Marvel Rivals is like better or whatever from like the beta. I feel like that's real risky. I know Overwatch is in a rough spot, so I empathize with that more. But like quitting Pokemo preemptively is so crazy, right? Um I think it's possible that Poke Force is better, but the odds of it are so low, and it most likely will take a lot more development time as well. Um, we'll have to just really play it by ear and see. There's, there's things that are so unpredictable like that with a, with a game release, so we'll have to just see. Like it's possible that Poke Force is the best Pokemon MMO on the market, and I switch over to it entirely. It's also possible that Poke Nexus cleans up their act tomorrow and becomes an incredible game, but the odds of that are probably lower than me winning the lottery. I'm sorry. I am probably yeah. I'm sorry to the Poke Nexus. I'm just leaning into it now. Um, I that game was not enjoyable for me whatsoever. Just play both. What's the problem? Um, it's really hard to play two MMOs at once, especially, like, successfully, especially, um, like, two MMOs of similar velocities or of similar gameplays. If you can do that and it's fun for you, more power to you, maybe I could do it short term for, like, a month or a few months. I don't think I could play week. I don't know, man. As somebody who played, you know, RuneScape, once again, 20,000 hours in four and a half years... I don't, you can't really like main, you can play games on the side. Like while I was playing RuneScape, I would play things like Hearthstone, bleh, play like, um, you know, Magic the Gathering, play like other games, uh, League of Legends, Skyrim. Um, I played Overwatch at times while AFK and stuff on RuneScape. Like you can play other stuff on the side with RuneScape, but you can't like main a second game. In my, in my, I can't, maybe you guys can. Um, I have troubles maining two games at once. I kind of have to put my focus into a game, and then I can have side games to break that monotony. But if you're just spending all the time grinding two different games, I think it kind of burns. It kind of burns the candle at both ends. Pat, you've got to filter in the GTL minimum 11 IVs and maximum 11 IVs. The result is really funny. This is pretty funny. Did he? Ah, oh, he didn't even EV it though. I guess all the stats are five, so that's kind of cool. He could EV train it with like training link to keep it to not let it gain XP. And it's selling for 111. This is kind of cool. This is pretty cool. Good on this guy. He needs to level it to level 11 and then um, level it to level 11 and then EV train it 11 in each EV. But that's very, that's a, I like look, projects like that are awesome. Is that a shiny sweet tune? Dude, shiny sweet tune? Yup, that is Rick. That is Rick Masters. He is a shiny Sweetcoon owner, dude, in the game. It's crazy, like, there's so few people that have shiny legendaries that you remember. Like, you remember the usernames of people that do. It's pretty cool. All right, here it is, fellas. The number we've all been waiting for. This number is actually important because someone redeemed a Twitch reward three months ago and said, hey, the next time that you go 69,420 encounters dry, I want you to catch that Pokemon for me. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're gonna catch the Pokemon. This is for a Twitch reward that's literally been sitting there. Literally a Twitch reward that has been sitting there for three months. You know? We're finally gonna be able to actually we'll actually be able to complete that Twitch reward. There's another I should have used netball. That's funny. There's another Twitch reward that is to be on if I if I were to reach a hundred K dry, a very similar thing. That one's been sitting there for eight months. So we'll see if that happens soon. Hopefully not though. This feels pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. It's it's, it's like a chapter. I can't send it because my mail is full. Okay, mail cleaned up later. There we go. What? <laughs> no, it's been so long for the Twitch reward. Has it been online recently? What does this mean? <laughs> Did he quit the game? <laughs> Bro was waiting for his Twitch reward for so long he quit the game. Oh no, boys. I should absolutely 100% check the Pokemon forums more on stream. I feel like the forums can have such good information, but it's so annoying to browse them as like an average player or a new player and browse them so consistently. But this post has it all. This post has humor. It has like tips slash maybe a leak-ish towards possible raids. Um, I'll we'll get to all of it in a second, but essentially, okay, this person made this post. Uh, Noctowl Fakemon thread. Uh, changes. Noctowl type in change to flying psychic. Basically just like... I honestly, I, now fake mon and changing mons to be custom, but it's not really something Pokemon does generally um, at all. And we'll, we'll see why in a second. Um, but Noctowl is pretty fucking weak. I like the idea of this. So Noctowl typing change to flying psychic. Noctowl's base stat changes 100 base HP, 52 to 82 defense. I'm so, I'm so here for 
knockout buffs, honestly. 80, but it's not traditional. I understand that, right? Special attack 86, special defense 105, speed 85. Hidden ability Omni Protect. When entering battles with Pokemon, it sets up a light screen reflector for two of turns. This is actually kind of crazy. It's actually, honestly, a cool ability. Is that a thing? That's cool. Um, and then new moves, Psychic, Trick Room, you know, whatever. Okay, cool idea. Buff knocked out, right? What are you doing, bro? Is, <laughs> is the funniest... I don't know why this is... <laughs> This is the funniest response possible to me, which is what are you what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Um, I bet you think about another woman. This is like shit posting memes. Meanwhile, <laughs> so good. But then okay. I respect obviously like fake mod is not something Pokemon really does at all. So it's it is kind it's a funny suggestion, but I think there's their ideas were at least good. I respect it and reasonable. Um, but the important thing, okay, the important thing, the raid related thing is Rach. We are not interested in implementing obtainable fake mons or adding stats slash moves slash abilities slash types to existing species that aren't canon to any generation. The goal is to be as faithful to the mainline games as we reasonably can. If you're looking for a new place where Noctowl is a strong pick as is though, it has some unique that new unique traits that are applicable to raids. It has access to Insomnia and a very deep support learn set, which may make it an optimal choice against certain bosses. I don't see why Rach would say this unless Noctowl would actually possibly be good against... Like, I think that's super interesting. It's a possibility. Don't don't go build your 5 times 31 Noctowls and then fucking rage at me or Rach when they're not good against... I don't know, you know, right? But that's really cool. The, also, the idea of... The idea of the Pokemon devs balancing raids around weaker Pokemon like no Noctowl actually being good or meta, that would make me the happiest fucking little Pokemon boy in the world. I, I will dr I've been talking about how I want RU slash PU for so I will totally drop that if we can get like just whether it's PvP or not, I like as many Pokemon being viable as possible. And if we could get things like Shuttle, things like Noctowl, things like um I don't know, like, NU threats that Rapidash, like, being meta at raids, that would make me so happy. That is so cool. So, possible, you know, raid information, Noctowl, maybe a, a Pokemon you want to build hilariously. We'll have to see. It's probably a pretty niche. We'll have to see, but I thought it was a pretty interesting post. Wait, apparently, thank you for telling me, Shamma Runner. Apparently, Rach actually gives us an example build of a Noctowl later on in the, in the post. Well, now I actually really want to see that. Let's see what you got, Rach. Let me control F, maybe. Now I'm so curious. Okay. <clears throat> Leak the Noctowl set. I know you have it prepped already. <laughs> said Zan Zanarchy baited it out of them, which is awesome. Okay. <clears throat> I don't, but the way I'd approach building one is... How much speed does it need to move before the boss? Invest that much, running timid slash jolly if necessary. Bold slash impish or calm slash careful if not. Depending on... Yeah, this is pretty basic team building. Uh, what does the boss do if I'm considering it as my answer? The boss using an AoE sleep move, which is the most obvious place to use it. Insomnia ability is choice here. Avenger of alternatives for it moves. It has access. Tailwind, haze, feather dance, reflect, light screen, defog, power screen, screech, uproar, thief. I just remember from the boss for the battle during the event. We probably running like place. Leave it to someone else. Very versatile set of moves that could adapt to different bosses. Wouldn't be my first choice as a generic supporter unless its typing is significant benefit, but it can end up being very good under certain circumstances. I can't guarantee that those circumstances will exist, but the potential is there. True. The downside of Noctowl is that if you're where it can't use Street or Feather. Look at this! Look at this actual like PvP like breakdown of Noctowl by Rage. Actual Pokemon Giga Chad player. It may not be able to switch out without sacrificing the Numon either. It's a flaw to keep in mind with a lot of supporters if you don't build them. True! Based. Flat damage like Nightshade. True. Actually, Digachad pose. I think it's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. This is such an unbelievably cool challenge. I'm doing an only water Pokemon account. Do you have any other recommendations besides egg farming Osmeril and Squirtle for money? Dude, that's awesome. Only water... Okay. I don't know exactly... What that entails, could you could you payday pick up against uh, Basculin and Dratini? That's like, all, you fish? That's fishing? It's like on the water? You could catch Whalmers for profit? Is that, does that count? I just, I don't know what counts as water only. 
by your definition, but I love, I love what you're doing. That's really fucking cool, dude. So there's a Whalemer catching event right now, and this was posted in global chat. This has got to be first place. Someone caught this during a Whalemer catch event. That is unhinged. Also, the IV placements are crazy. A 180 Whalemer. A four times third. This is insane. The odds of this are like so, like hundreds of thousands, if not pushing like millions. Like that's, this is a crazy fucking catch. Congrats to that guy. That's got to be first place. He's got to win that event. That is wild. All right, we're about to hit 70,000 encounters. So let's go over the binomial distribution of shiny hunting, like some good nerds that we are. Now, 70,000 isn't actually on this chart, but it should probably be in the middle here between 60K and uh, 80K. So with donator status split between 89% and 94, it's probably around a 92% chance that I would have gotten a shiny by now, which obviously you can you can say to yourself, oh my God, Petrowski, that's so unlucky. How do you deal with it? Well, the way that I think about it is like, if I do 10 shiny, that's about one, that's about one out of 10, a little less likely the one attempt but like if i do 10 shiny hunts odds are one of them is going to go about this dry 70k so and i've done you know 40 shiny hunts so it makes sense some of them should eventually go this dry i honestly don't feel too bad about it 70k isn't too crazy especially since i've been doing like times three hordes and times five hordes etc i've done a fair amount of eggs like six thousand or so eggs throughout these seventy thousand encounters and maybe five thousand or so singles but the large majority has been times three and times five hordes which i honestly don't mind so in my reality in my world it could be a lot worse personally in my opinion that's another good way to think about it slash put it uh put it like every 10th person should go 70k dry it's it's not that crazy right like if there's 1500 people playing shiny wars odds are one of us should go stupidly disgustingly dry all right fellas once again we have an absolutely s tier uh post to cover on the pokemon forums this is like 90 percent chance a joke slash a troll so keep that in mind but we've got our poster relevant did a cater okay hello everyone please do not mistake me as some would call a noob i am a professional do not mess with me i speak for everyone when i say that we need some way to some way to encounter hordes for now every single way is so slow and mediocre why do we need to do single encounters and hope for a chance to find hordes it's ridiculous i know which is why i propose that we implement some other guaranteed way to initiate horde battles <coughs> Take it from the original games and make the sweet scent button summon hordes. I'm not thankful. I'm not thankful to anyone for reading. It's so funny. I'm not thankful to anyone for reading. Okay, after reading this more, this is 100% a troll. It's not even like 90%. You're reading this from your own free will. Why would I thank you? <laughs> that is actually a baseline. Do I look like a servant or a maid? I mustn't be grateful in any way. I hope I got my point through. This should be copy paste this and everything you ever post in text. This is so funny. I'm not thankful to anyone for reading. Is do I look like a servant or a maid? Modification. I am not English. Excuse me for linguistic disability. I use a translator. No language wall can ever stop me from honing my favorite game into what it should be. This is amazing. Sounds like a giant goblin from your folklore. Oh my god. What does this mean? Okay, well, that's where we start. Okay. Anyways, well, <laughs> this is the beauty. This is what the developers of this game have to read. Um, this is the community that they know and the, the players that they get to uh, know very well, for better or for worse. Fuck it, boys. I bought one. Apparently, the, uh, the official Shiny Wars attire is officially the military cap. I'm just going to keep my current outfit as well. This is one of the rare times you'll see me without the pink afro. But here we are, boys. We're going to war. With our lollipop and wings, we're going to war, fellas. Woomy shiny cactia? Wait, let me grab my eggs. That's huge, though. That's actually huge. Here, one sec. One sec. Come, 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 come. Woomy shiny cactia? I assume it's at this... Obviously, it has to be this spot, right? What ch is he on channel 4? I think a lot of Team Mystery people on channel 4. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Woomy, Woomy, Woomy. Is he here? Woomy Nation? He's in the charm wearing the military cap that gives you extra shiny luck. True, true, true. Giga Chad Woomy. Congratulations, dude. Congrats, congrats, gamer. Absolutely massive, dude. Absolutely massive. Congrats, dude. 
Someone in chat said Mudkip has a 100% win rate in OU. I'm guessing it's just one game. If it's anything more than one game, I will be impressed. It's one game. I mean, that is kind of <laughs> that is kind of based. <laughs> Undefeated actual Dika Chad. Um, if, if someone could manage to win more, I I should do that. I should play like OU and just do like five of the most broken Pokemon and then have like Shuckle. How many Shuckle games are played? 616 Shuckle games in OU and it's at a 22% win rate. Oh boys, it's actually Jover. Thoughts on Pokemon adding the Reggie Trio? I think the Reggie Trio is one of the safest, most non-controversial. Like I I can't see anything wrong with adding the Reggie Trio to Pokemon. Like what maybe most broken scenario? Like what? Like Reggie ice like finds a spot in like nu like i like i don't like I, dude like i don't know like maybe regist like i like they're all not good like i can't imagine now add them with body press body press as someone who doesn't play gen 6 plus pokemon body press seems like one of the most broken moves i've ever seen i don't know how that shit is. that shit seems insane but i don't play gen 6 plus so maybe i'm just totally wrong um maybe it's like maybe it is like it makes sense given the you know other mons i i don't know um but yeah, the Reggie Trio, I can't imagine there being a problem with them, but I could be wrong. Ooh, Pat, if you had unlimited money, what would be your first buy in Pokemon? Um, in Pokemon, probably all of the 2012s off the market. I like all the 2012s, all the 2013s, and then stock up on Donator statuses, stock up on Shiny Charms. Um, what else? Stuff like that with Vanities. I'd probably, the first Vanity I'd probably buy hilariously i just want the vampire fangs i can't afford them oh no i can't quite i want vampire fangs I, I like those i've come to really appreciate the stupid little vanities that have very small little effects I, so i really do want to own vampire fangs at one point someday fuck am i actually out of eggs i don't know why i did not think i was that close to being out oh no that's actually tragic i really don't want to be out of eggs right now oh that's so sad actually well, back to the old grindstone. Anybody have ditto boxes to sell? Okay, this might be the second food take of the day, but it's worth it, okay? Because because mud root beer was brought up, okay? I love root beer. I am like, I might be root beer's number one fan, okay? I'm, I'm at least top three, top five. I love root beer. Like, it's amazing. It's so good. Okay, right? In terms of the, the root beer debate, the mug versus barks versus A&W, okay? It's pretty clear, okay? So what I'll say is, Mug has the best branding, but it's not the best root beer. I think Mug is probably ranked two. I think Mug is ranked two. If anything, maybe ranked three, but probably ranked two. Probably ranked... No, it might be ranked three. Mug is so foamy, but it's kind of nice. Barks, yes. Barks root beer is the best. Barks got that bite. True. Mug may have the dog on the on the front, on the the cover, but Barks has that bite in them, that dog in them. And I... Uh, the Bart's root beer is by far the best, 100%. So Bart's rank one, Mug rank two, maybe. It's probably Mug rank three. It's probably Bart's rank one, A and W rank two, because they have a, they have a diet which is nice, and then Mug rank three. I love you, Mug. I love your memes. I love your branding, but you're probably the you know I still drink you, but you're probably the worst root beer on the market. Wait, that is a giga chat. Mug for floats is actually based. Mug for root beer flates floats is probably the, the most that's actually based could take this is truly the the rare shiny hunters wet dream dude i whenever you find a ditto box seller who has like this guy has like 20 boxes of dittos he said like that is i'll be dude I, it's actually the best feeling going around to each ditto box trader and buying like one box from like 10 12 like 16 different people it can be a pain dude it, find a, a guy with a ton of boxes you you ditto box sellers are my fucking heroes dude it's oh my god it's appreciated Wait, is this a troll in-game mail about the troll forum post that we read earlier? Dedicated or relevant? A letter of expression. This is levels of trolling that is cra- What is happening? <clears throat> Hello, you are a streamer. I hope so. <laughs> I was informed about how you were affected by my forum. I would like to thank you for the attention you've brought. <laughs> what? What attention did I... Honestly, I haven't considered that there are people with scalps in this community. And it's extravagant on how your reaction was non-heavy sold and care you poured into it. 
I'm not grateful to you <laughs> in a personal matter. I have to make that clear because of the shadows that lurk within. This is... <laughs> I don't even know if I should... What is happening? The shadows that lurk within? Most sane Pokemon Mo forum user. Hey, better luck next year, Pat. You'll get a shiny by then, I bet. Dude, people are already... Dude, we're like 10 days into shiny wars. And I have no shinies, so people are already like, hey, better luck next time, dude. <laughs> the event's over for you, I guess. <laughs> Fuck, man. Come on. Yo, Pat, I did a month, 31 days worth of berry farming, seeds for lepas, with about three characters. Profit per month is 17.1 million Pokéen, and it takes about 30 to 45 minutes a day in total. Dude, I that data, that's amazing. If you could, like, turn that into a video or a forum guide, like, we, we need more stuff like that, dude. That's so amazing. The like longer term like numbers. Also, that's so cool to hear. Th three three alts that you, I assume you only did it with like Unova. Did you do, like Unova like Mistralton City or did you have like multiple locations or how intense was it? And then, uh, but that's the, the idea that someone could make, you know, 17.1 million Pokéen only play for 30 minutes a day, 30 to 45 minutes a day. Like that's so good. It's so cool to hear stuff like that because I feel like I feel like you just you just end up hearing so much of the negative perspectives on the internet, but there are some really cool positive ones as well, you know? That's really cool to hear, man. So that's that's amazing, man. Nice job. Like stuff like that should inspire hope to like casual players or average players or like players who can't play that much time. Like that should be a really cool thing to like hear that. Like, oh shit, like I, I can go do that. Like hell yeah. Okay. How many ditto boxes did I just buy? I just I just bought so many ditto boxes. Thank you so much. All thanks to our boy Clo over here. Dude, that was his guy had so many ditto boxes. All of them. I bought a ton. I bought like a lot. A lot of ditto boxes. Anyways, um, here's what I have on the on this account. I have some on another alt account. Here's all the ditto boxes. Um, I want to try to recreate a glitch though. I'm gonna try to crash Pokemon. Okay. There was this thing that I kept doing where I would drag this box down here. So the now the account box got moved. And then if I open up the PC. Yes, I, f I figured it out. Okay, I found out what caused it. Okay, we consistently can create it, re recreate it. So yeah, my Pokemon crashed twice while doing those Ditto Box trades, and that's why. So if you move, if you make the, if you force the account box to move and drag a box in front of its position, it just always crashes Pokemon. That's so interesting. Okay, Pat hacking Pokemon. It's really good to, if you're experiencing a crash like that, try to recreate it or try to recreate that glitch. And understanding why that happens is always so cool to learn and really helpful. But alrighty, fellas, I have been live for, after that crash, I, I've been live for 7 hours and 15 minutes or so today. I have a lot of dittos, a lot of eggs to make tomorrow. However, I'm honestly too tired to work today. I'm going to I'm gonna go do some, like, horde hunting and stuff um, off stream and still get some encounters, get my encounters up a little bit, but nothing too crazy. We are ending today at just around 71,000 encounters. Crash in the game, crash my encounter counter as well. So we're ending right around 71,000 encounters, and I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow for some more Shiny Wars hunting. Hopefully you enjoyed today's stream recap. If you did, liking it helps tremendously. Dislike if you didn't enjoy it. That's also totally okay. Subscribe to the channel for daily pokemon videos i upload every single day about this game that i really, really care about and love so much follow me on twitch for streams discord down below if you're interested in that and if you want to go above and beyond and support the channel youtube memberships twitch primes and twitch subs are all super freaking helpful thanks so much for watching again have a great day and good luck in your pokemon journey hey thank you so very much for watching until the very end of the video that means the world to me and everyone on this list means even more to me for helping support the channel every single day thanks so much